Queen Letizia of Spain and First Lady Jill Biden have highlighted the importance of global cooperation in efforts to find a cure for cancer. Both women are advocates for cancer patients. They spoke at the sidelines of the United Nations in New York on Wednesday after touring Columbia University's Medical Center in northern Manhattan neighborhood of Washington Heights while their husbands attended the UN General Assembly session. The visit was part of the Biden administration's Cancer Moonshot, an ambitious initiative to halve cancer death rates in the next 25 years. Queen Letizia, in her speech in English, said that cancer knows no borders and this social perspective of research is a global imperative. To introduce a woman who has been a tireless partner in this fight for more than a decade, who fights for the people of Spain and cancer patients around the world, my dear friend, Queen Letizia. Thank you, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone, especially to Brianne and Mario. <laughs> Good morning. Allow me to start my remarks by thanking you, Dr. Biden, dear Jill, for your constant support of cancer research and prevention over so many years, as well as for the general advancement of all the mechanisms that allow equal access to the best therapeutic tools. Very recently, as you say, during your visit in Madrid in the NATO summit, all of us who are part of the Spanish Association Against Cancer witnessed the strength and determination of your commitment and the inspiring impulse of your words. Thanks also to Herbert Irving Comprehensive Cancer Center at Columbia University and of course the National Cancer Institute for hosting us. Let me recognize the role of the Spanish Association Against Cancer for promoting and leading this World Cancer Research Day. Well, Marie Curie apparently once said, we stop fearing that what we have learned to understand. Now is the time to understand more so that, may, that we may fear less. That is precisely why we are here, to vindicate the transformative role of science and to enhance our collective approach so we may redouble our necessary efforts and therefore generate much more shared knowledge worldwide. We are talking about science, about research, probably the most powerful tool to advance in progress and social welfare. Spain is also strongly committed to science as an engine of economic, social and health transformation. Therefore, it is essential that the results reach everyone, whoever they are, wherever they live, and whatever their economy capacity may be. This is the challenge we are facing in Spain, in US, and all over the world. Cancer knows no borders, and this social perspective of research is a global imperative. The comprehensive equity that we seek and is so relevant to this World Cancer Research Day is strikingly exemplified and something that we have been hearing for decades about its importance, but still today lacks the true investment required. That is prevention. Experts have said it more than a thousand times. Most recently, Philippe Thierry, president of the Organization of European Cancer Institutes. The main inequality lies in prevention since more than 40% of tumors have their origin in the consumption of tobacco, alcohol, and a poor diet. Let me add to this point what our world-renowned scientist Carlos lopez Otín says and cannot be more clear. Neither immunotherapy nor therapies based on genome deciferment, nor the most sophisticated robotic surgery equipment, nor 
high precision radiotherapy can save many lives as cancer prevention. And by the way, of all risk factors, tobacco is the most decisive as it is the greatest trigger for developing cancer. Allow me to stress even further the huge importance of prevention and its impact on equity with the also very clear message coming from European Commission's cancer plan. Prevention is more effective than any cure and the most cost-effective cancer control strategy in the long term. Prevention, early diagnosis, and equity. This is a triple perspective that places people at the very center of everything and um, that permits the ecosystem we are part form by the health systems of each country, researchers, spaces, administrations, and governments, civil society, the business community, and large companies, universities, and schools. Susan Sontag, the great New Yorker and Prince of Asturias Award in Literature, in her still valid book, Illness as a Metaphor, recommended us to avoid romanticizing using metaphors or warlike language when talking about cancer. I believe we are only gradually beginning to overcome what she denounced. Science today increasingly integrates kindness and reality, inspired by deep and humane values with a universal aim and aspiration to improve people's lives. Scientists and scientific institutions worldwide are also fully aware of the limited availability of resources and of the dire need to promote proper health education to respect and uphold one's own health and that of others. Just thank you very much. U.S. President and his wife lost their oldest son, Bu, to brain cancer in 2015. The tour was also a follow-up to when Jill Biden and Letizia met in Madrid in June before a NATO summit. The Queen invited the First Lady to see some of Spain's cancer research efforts. The First Lady said Wednesday that she wanted to bring the Queen to the Columbia University Center so she could learn about cancer research being done in the United States. The Columbia Center collaborates with researchers in Spain. Earlier, Queen Letizia visited the headquarters of the Cervantes Institute in New York with Spanish researchers in the fight against cancer. Upon her arrival, Donna Letizia was received by the president of the AECC and its scientific foundation with other high officials. After entering the exhibition hall and taking his place at the table, the meeting began with a few words of welcome from the president of the AECC, who at the end gave the floor to the scientific director of the scientific foundation of the AECC. At the end of the interactions, an open dialogue took place. The day before, the Queen participated in the event organized by UNICEF and WHO within the high-level week of the United Nations General Assembly 2022 and the Secretary General's Summit for the Transformation of Education. <laughs> 